Hi folks, Dr. Robert Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Now, uh, I wanted to do a quick video today um, on GABA and um, whether it crosses the blood-brain barrier uh, or not and whether that is even important. Now, the reason I wanted to do this is because I've made um, quite a number of videos on GABA and how it can have uh, anxiolytic effects uh, in humans and it's an effective supplement, particularly for those people who have you know, generalized anxiety disorder or perhaps are uh, having difficulty sleeping. Uh, and I get a lot of comments uh, in the comments section of my videos that say that GABA can't cross the blood-brain barrier. And rather than me typing out a reply uh, to those comments, I thought I'd do a video to explain where I'm coming from in terms of the fact that I don't believe that GABA even needs to get into the brain to have an anxiolytic effect. Now, um, GABA is uh, a naturally occurring neurotransmitter in humans and animals. Uh, it's released from neurons um, and uh, when it's released it affects chloride channels in the brain and these chloride channels are opened and when these chloride channels are opened uh, the membrane potential of the neurons that it affects is decreased and therefore it has an inhibitory effect in the brain so it has a calming effect every time these chloride channels are opened uh, the the affected neuron is its excitability decreases so this is uh, why GABA is the target of many drugs including benzodiazepines um, and barbiturates and uh, it's a useful system to be able to manipulate because if you can decrease the excitability of the brain you can decrease um, the anxiety caused by other neurotransmitters um, which are excitatory and that may you know induce anxiety uh, when there's an imbalance so benzodiazepines will cause a release of GABA from neurons and that will then uh, affect the GABA uh, receptors which will open uh, they, there's a chloride channel attached to them this chloride channel opens and that decreases the excitability of the brain and that's really how benzodiazepines work it's how benzodiazepines cause a calming effect so targeting the GABA system uh, is an effective way of causing um, an anxiolytic uh, effect in the brain and this has been known um, in pharmacology for a long time and some of these drugs that affect the GABA system are very old um, and there are newer versions made of them but they will work in very much the same way interestingly flavonoids uh, in foods also are able to affect the GABA uh, chloride channel but they affect a different part to the benzodiazepine drugs but they may work in a very similar way so this is why this is why uh, high plant um, diets are anxiolytic diets uh, if they contain lots of flavonoids those flavonoids may have a albeit very much milder effect uh, than diazepam um, they don't have uh, many of the side effects they don't have any of the side effects of the you know the studies that have been done in humans so um this is why GABA is important and obviously um, you know the theory goes that if you take GABA in the diet you may be able to affect um, the brain and cause a calming effect. Um, the, the problem is that does, you know, the question is does the GABA get into the brain to be able to affect these uh, neurons to be able to cause a calming effect. Now GABA is available as a supplement and it's also available in certain foods. There are fortified teas with GABA in them. There's yogurt with which has GABA in them. Um, and studies have been done on humans and animals with either the foods or the supplements. And there is a consensus that GABA in food or GABA as supplements does cause a calming effect. There is evidence to show that. So the question is, if there is a calming effect, does it even matter if the GABA gets into the brain? I would say no. Uh, if GABA is calming and GABA has a calming effect when you consume it, it's not. It doesn't bother me whether it gets into the brain. That, uh, as long as you know, the toxicity studies are done, and there's no um, inherent danger with taking it, that is enough of a, a you know, a, a, of a physiological change in order to make it a worthwhile supplement. Um, so it really I think the question is moot whether it gets into the brain or not. There is enough evidence to show that GABA supplements and GABA fortified foods are anxiolytic. They do have a calming effect. They do have a slight sedative effect and therefore um, it's irrelevant whether it gets into the brain or not. But let's have a look at this in more detail about how GABA could actually cause an effect that is calming without getting into the brain. Uh, many people assume that if, the, if a supplement or a drug can't get into the brain it can't have an effect in the brain. But they're forgetting that the brain 
is not just connected to the body by a blood supply, it's also connected by a neuronal connection uh, which runs through the spinal cord. Uh, and if you can affect that neuronal connection, you can directly affect the brain without having to go into the brain itself. And this may be the way that GABA actually works. And there was a very interesting study, uh, and I will put the link to this study in the comments box below this video, that was done on mice. Now the mice were fed um, Lactobacillus rhamnosus, which is a type of bacteria, and it's known that those bacteria, when they ferment foods, um, they produce um, GABA. As a, as a, as a, from glutamate, which is a, the normal synthetic pathway for GABA. It's how we produce GABA. We produce it from uh, the same amino acid, glutamate. Um, and they obviously do this in the gut, uh, because that's where they live. So the, the GABA that they produce is in the gut. Uh, and what the uh, researchers found was that um, when the mice were given this lactobacillus rhamnosus, this bacteria, uh, they had, they noticed a calming effect in the laboratory mice, and they they, they observed this through doing various tests on the mice using animal models of anxiety and depression, for example. Um, now, what else they noticed was that when the mice were given this lactobacillus rhamnosus, um, there was an increase in the, glab the GABA receptors of the enterocytes. So it, it, the, the authors said that the um, uh, concluded that the, 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 the bacteria fermenting the food in the gut of the mice, they were producing GABA from glutamate. And this GABA was actually causing the enterocytes in the gut to increase the amount of GABA receptors that they contained. So there was a physiological interaction between the bacteria and the guts of the mice. Now, the interesting thing about this study was that when the um, vagal nerve of the mice was cut, so that's the nerve that runs from the brain to the gut, when they cut the vagal nerve, the calming effects of GABA disappeared in the mice. Now, the conclusion from the authors was that the GABA was being produced in the enterocytes, the enterocytes were upregulating their GABA receptors and they were then sending the calming signal into the brain through the vagal nerve. So this is good evidence that um, you don't need GABA to get into the brain. You don't need that signal to get into the brain um, and you can actually have a, a, a calming effect by affecting the neurotransmitter systems that are in the gut. And it's worth pointing out that there are more neuronal connections in the gut than there are in the brain. There are serotonin receptors, GABA receptors, norepinephrine receptors, adrenaline receptors, dopamine receptors, all in the gut and they're all connected to the brain via the vagal nerve. Uh, and therefore there is a way for foods to directly uh, affect um, brain uh, activity. And there is this is also evidence that there is a way for bacteria in the gut to affect brain activity, which explains a lot of the effects that you see perhaps of foods uh, and bacteria when they're taken uh, in uh, as part of a healthy diet. Um, so the blood brain barrier is interesting, but it's not the be all and end all of GABA. Uh, another interesting thing is that while there are studies that, um, and so so what we've concluded so far is you don't need GABA to get into the brain. However, GABA may get into the brain. And the reason that GABA may actually get into the brain is that uh, many of the early studies that looked at GABA and measured the uh, GABA concentration in the brain were done on animals. So firstly, we don't know how uh, uh, how relevant that is to humans. Animals animals are animals, humans are humans. But let's assume that the, the model is the same, and it probably is, uh, and let's assume that you can measure the GABA uh, uptake into the brain by measuring the brain tissue. The problem with this is that a lot of the early studies that supplemented with GABA and then measured brain tissue, they didn't understand how the, um, the GABA was able to cross the blood-brain barrier. Now, there are GABA receptors on the blood-brain barrier, so instantly, to me, that would suggest that, that GABA is able to cross the blood-brain blood -brain barrier. Uh, and it does. It's been shown. Um, we know there is an efflux of GABA from the brain into the body. The problem with measuring GABA uptake to the brain is that the efflux of GABA from the brain to the body is 17 times higher than the uptake from the body to the brain. And therefore, it makes it very difficult to actually measure um, GABA accumulation in brain tissue because the, um, the, the general flow of GABA is out of the brain and into the body. So you, you, you can't really supplement with GABA and measure 
the uh, the changes in the in the brain GABA because there's such a high efflux of GABA back into the body but that doesn't mean it doesn't get into the brain it just means it's very difficult to measure it so an absence of evidence in this case doesn't mean that there is conclusive evidence that the GABA can't get into the brain it simply means that we can't measure it so therefore we're not sure but the fact that there are GABA receptors on the blood brain barrier that is a fact it's been measured they they know there are GABA receptors there and they know that GABA is effluxed from the brain into the body. So it does travel out of the brain and into the body. The evidence points to the fact that GABA likely does get into the brain. And the early studies that said that it uh, that, that show that it doesn't um, really just didn't look at all the information. And, and this is how science works. You know, uh, uh, you know, some studies may uh, make false conclusions, but as other evidence becomes uh, available, uh, you know, the, the paradigm changes. And, you know, the consensus now is that perhaps GABA does get into the brain, but it gets into the brain um, in uh, small amounts. Uh, and that small amount is dwarfed by the efflux of GABA back into the body and therefore it's very difficult to measure however looking at the other study it really I don't think it really matters if GABA gets into the brain or not um, it seems to be in, in mice at least that GABA is able to actually communicate its signal into the brain through the vagal nerve and therefore there's no need for the GABA to actually cross the blood-brain barrier uh, and this is something that's forgotten uh, by many people who you know look at nutrition they really don't understand that the gut is really a, a massively uh, influential um, signal receptor for the brain the gut and the brain are intimately connected with this vagal nerve the signal passes both ways um, and you know this is possibly where we get you know the, the you know the expression I have a gut feeling because your brain you know your brain is connected directly to your gut and you know when you when you you know you have a relationship that breaks up you feel it in your guts that's where you you feel the pain um, and so the gut and the brain are intimately connected uh, and so therefore you know you take food and it's in direct connection with your gut those signals are known to be transmitted to the brain through the vagal nerve so that's my reply to people um, to the comments that I get to say that GABA doesn't pass into the brain my first um, you know response would be I don't think it matters and my second response would be I think the early studies that looked at this um, didn't take the whole picture into account and they may actually have underestimated the ability of GABA to get into the brain so uh, if you know if people comment now I can direct them to this video those people who um, you know didn't weren't aware of this I hope this was interesting anyway uh, it does you know it, it, you know improve your nutritional knowledge because you know that what you take and put into your gut is going to directly afraid, uh, affect how your brain works and so just remember there are dopamine serotonin adrenaline noradrenaline uh, GABA receptors glutamate receptors in your gut and they all uh, have an influence on how your brain uh, thinks and processes information so as always eat well stay healthy and protect yourself and I will see you soon for another video take care